Okay, as for today's beast, 2006 Chevy Trailblazer. Customer's complaint is that he's getting a code in here that he can't seem to get rid of. Let me get back out here and I'll show you which one that is. I was brought in here for a programming. I wasn't brought in here for anything else. But while I'm here, as of right now, let's see if I can set that code for you. There we go. We got the light on. And our code is up there. Steering wheel angle sensor performance CO455. We brought here to the shop because they had already replaced two steering wheel angle sensors. Notice that number up there, folks. That is a Dorman number. Even though it has a Napa box, it is a Dorman number. Made in good old China. Okay. Uh, very quickly here. Let me get back all the way out and I'll show you what's going on. I'll show you part of the problem that everybody always seems to have with this car. One of the things is they start off with the 2006 Chevy Trailblazer. And if I go in here and I take a look, and this is this happens to be the factory tool, but it does happen on all the others I've already checked. If I come in here and I go into my ABS and I get into my data display and I look for a steering angle sensor, there is none. There is no PID data at all for a steering angle sensor. None of these here will change. We got dump valves, isolation valves, brake switch status, everything but what we're originally looking for. The one reason why that light down there just keeps on setting, if I can zoom in on that, there we go. We want to actually fix the real problem, which is going to be that DTC setting in the ABS module. But what happens here is that the software that they actually use in the computer, not just in this scan tool computer, but in the anti-lock brake control computer, is actually 2007 software. So what you have to do is you have to back out, go into 2007, pick the Trailblazer again, go down the chassis, and then magically, when you go into your data display, You will get your steering wheel position sensor inputs. Now I will move this wheel just back and forth a little bit here, try to keep you in focus. And what you'll notice right away is this bottom line, these two bottom ones here are digital steering wheel position sensor, phase A and phase B. When you move this back and forth, what you should have is a little square wave or basically a zero to five signal that'll be changing back and forth. They've been replacing this sensor, but phase A never changes. So, quick checks down below that we can do. Um, I've already asked them to leave the panel down so we have access to the sensor. Uh, we're gonna just grab trusty old incandescent test light and we're gonna do a quick little test. If we come down and we hook up to a ground here, right here in the center is our steering angle sensor. You can see I've already back probed the T-pin in because this one right here is going to be our signal B. That's gonna be this light blue wire. So if I take this thing and I tap it to ground, there's no power there or anything like that, so I don't expect the test light to light, but what I'm doing is I'm, bring, I'm gonna to try to pull the signal down so we go from high to low. So I will get you up here on the scanner and I will touch the, come on, focus. I am touching it now to ground. And I'm releasing, touching it, and releasing. So, this is what's going on. Now, if I move that over to the light green, which is right next to it there, pin 3. Move the T-pin over, and once again, focus. Here we go. And I do the exact same thing, and I sit here and I tap it, and I test it this way. If I hold it to ground, let me get up here again. I apologize for the shakiness. I am touching it to ground now. No change. Off, on, off, on. Okay, so that tells us a little bit already. We're going to go a little bit further. Next step is going to be we're going to pull out a voltmeter. Okay, just grabbed the voltmeter. Got it set up over here. Keys on on right now, up on the screen. Right now we're tied into that uh, steering wheel sensor signal A. So if we move it back and forth, now I use the graphing meter. You could use a regular voltmeter. Just expect though that you'll probably see about 5 volts. Because in this case here, it's going, as you can see, from 0 0.4 to 10.97. Uh, battery's a little bit low on this thing, although I don't think it's actually that low. I think one signal, the voltage regulator pulls down a little bit more than the other, if I remember this one right. And if 
by moving back and forth, obviously you see a nice clean cut square wave. So that's our high low, high low, high low that we should be seeing on a scan tool. But as you can see, as we move back and forth, we do not. All right. Now, I'll do the other one there just for the sake of continuity because I know everybody's gonna ask, just in case that the wiring might be switched. Let me switch this over to the light blue wire, which is right next to it. If we go to that one. This is B, and yeah, I was right about that. So it goes from about 11, yeah, just a little slight bit higher. So we got the exact same thing here. So this is B, B is showing a switching input, and as I move back and forth, so obviously both signals are good coming out of the steering wheel position sensor. It tells us a lot about the circuit, and I'll get into that when I have the wiring diagram up on the screen for you. Um, next step here though is gonna be going down and seeing what kind of a setup we have. Matter of fact, I could probably do that right here. Just give me one second to get signed in. All right. Okay, we have our wiring diagram up on the screen. This is going to be for our steering wheel speed position sensor. Um, hopefully it doesn't come out too grainy for you guys. Uh, but here's what we have. We have a power coming in here from an HVAC one fuse down through a voltage regulator coming all the way across and then down here feeding into our sensor A, B, and C or actually our, what is that, our index pulse don't know what that means, don't see it on the scan tool, I'm not really concerned about it my main concern is this guy right here steering wheel speed position signal A what I want to look for though is the easiest place to test the very first thing that I see on here and let me change that around a little bit so we can see that a little bit better is this guy right here C101 if I can locate C101, I know that that's somewhere where I want to test from. That way I can break the system in half. Do I want to look in this direction going up, or do I want to look in this direction going down to the brake control module? So that's my easiest test point. It's a one number, which means it should be out underneath the hood. And uh, I'm going to get some info on that right now, get a location, and we'll go out there and take a look. Okay, one of the things I like to do first, every time I get into a wiring diagram and I'm looking for a connector number, connector positions are nice when they show them in the harness and everything is drawn out for us and we have a, you know, uh, an idea as to where things are. Sometimes though you'll have a couple of connectors that are right next to one another and they look exactly the same. So the first thing I always do is I go into connector view. Um, I have my C101 up here on the screen already. It tells me in here that I have a, let's go down a little bit here, it should say it how many terminals we have okay here we are it's a 38 way black connector that tells me a lot already so if I have one that's next to a gray or anything else like that that's obviously not the one I want to check I get a mental picture of that I know what it's supposed to look like and then I'll move myself back out which I can do right now and then we'll go into the actual location so back out of here on all data get into our locations and then we want to go to a connector by number, C101, let's get in there. Isn't that nice? They skip everything. All right, let's back all the way out then, and we'll go into this one here, master connector list, see if it tells us. It might only give us the actual wording and no picture to go along with it. Okay chassis uh, harness to the instrument panel harness in the underhood compartment to the right of the underhood fuse box. Well, let's go take a look. There's our underhood fuse box. And I'll tell you, that sure looks easy enough to me. If I can get down here and actually see how many pins we have, I can get a better idea. But that looks like our connector right here. Nice. All right, so 38 pin connector and something that we can access easy. All right, well, that wasn't planned. Um, happy it's there though. All right, let me get some, let me get my voltmeter out here and see if we have our set. Okay, and just so we, we know we're gonna do our testing from, we said we're gonna go to that connector number 101 over here. We're gonna go on this side because this is the side over here where our EBCM is. That's actually what we wanna read. So we're gonna look at B10. I've already hooked up out here located B10 which happens to be the only light green wire by the way in the entire connector and we're back probed in there with our voltmeter which I have up here hopefully we'll be able to see it and the key is on on that's gonna be nearly impossible to see Let's see if I can 
change that lighting a little bit. Alright, so with that in place I'm going to move the steering wheel back and forth and I know it's a little bit hard to see but I'll try to get in closer for you but we do have our signal that means that it's good through connector B101 or C101 excuse me going down to the brake control module next step is I just have to get down to the brake control module verify it there if the signal is good and it's making it into the brake control module and I'm not seeing it change that means we just need the module get a new one in there program it and we'll be done okay our next testing position Sorry for my hand in front of the camera there. We're going to go down here to pin number 39, which is going to be right at the steering wheel position sensor as signal A again at the EBCM. Got that set up for you guys already. Now, this is the part where I'm sure I'm going to get a question. I've unplugged the ABS control module and back pinned into pin number 39. That is a front probing pin, and it's an extremely fine one made for M60 terminals. It's not the standard ones that you see in the Lyle boxes or anything else. That thing is like hair thin. It's almost like a thin little strand of wire. Um, I am pin there and I'm also using the ABS module ground. So I am back probed here. Got our voltmeter right in front of us. And right now 7.5, 7.6. We're going to guide steering wheel. Let's see it up there. And if I can reach it, there we go. And we're moving it back and forth. Now, I know my signal at this point is good all the way back to the module. Keep in mind now, that's with the module unplugged. So with the module unplugged, the noise it might look a little bit more noisy, um, simply because it's not actually being filtered out. We're going through a voltage regulator, we're turning something on and off, it may look a little bit more noisy that way, but in this case here though, there was definitely enough square waves though where it should be seeing the on-off signal, and we're not seeing it there. So at this point, we're gonna get an ABS control module for this thing, program it in, and uh, get this car back out on the road. Thanks for watching.